It is widely accepted that Africa is a cradle of humankind. Fossils and fish remains dating back four million years show that we have relied on the ocean for our sustenance and survival from the very beginning. Today, instead of fishing with spears, we use harmful, unsustainable methods. Instead of reed boats, we use diesel and coal-powered engines, nuclear ships and cruise ships. We transport 90% of the world's goods by sea. And below the shipping highways are a vast network of data cables that enable my family to tune in back home to watch me make this speech. The benefits of this advancement are clear, but there's an apt Zulu saying, la lela ulwantli, which means listen to the ocean. And when we do, we hear a dire warning. The ocean is telling us it needs healing. If the shipping industry were a country, it would be the world's sixth largest emitter of carbon dioxide. Now, excuse the pun, but please let that sink in. <laughs> Maritime shipping also accounts for up to 15% of the world's sulfur emissions and up to 24% of the world's nitrogen emissions, destroying both coral reefs and the ozone layer. The question is, what can we do about it? In my work to support emerging African blue economies, the Great Blue Wall has really struck me as one initiative with the potential for a positive change on a huge scale, which is crucial if we are to reverse the climate crisis. On a recent visit to Seychelles, the country behind the initiative first, I was struck by the way young people have informed its policies and helped set its goals. And I left determined to support this great initiative as much as possible. So what is it then, you'd ask? Well, despite being the world's third largest ocean, only 8% of the Indian Ocean is currently under legal protection. The Great Blue Wall has emerged as an African-led initiative to create interconnected, protected seascapes that transcend geographical boundaries and to protect the ocean, 30% of the ocean by 2030, launched by the Republic of Seychelles and championed by the country's former president. The initiative is fast gaining global recognition. It seeks to become a driver of, of nature conservation and sustainable development outcomes by unlocking the development of a regenerative blue economy, promoting blue entrepreneurship skills by using innovative financial instruments such as the Blue Bond that aim to restore ocean health. Ten states have signed up so far, agreeing in principle, to enhance cooperation between conservation areas in the, ocean, in the Indian Ocean region. Now, the pledges need to, need to be translated into action, and more countries need to get on board. To maximize the impact of the Great Blue Wall, governments need to strengthen the institutional capacities to manage marine resources. Meanwhile, the International Maritime Organization plays a vital role in creating and enforcing shipping regulations. We must back coast to accelerate shipping decarbonization and prepare the way for zero carbon vessels and fuels by 2030 with through national action plans and penalties for non-compliance. The Great Blue Wall could potentially benefit over 70 million people in the Western Indian Ocean region. I have made it my priority to promote the Great Blue Wall on behalf of the Institute for Security Studies, because when it comes to inclusivity in emerging African blue economies, the Great Blue Wall shows enormous promise. Africa is the world's youngest continent 
with a youth population rate of up to 60% that is expected to double by 2050. The Great Blue Wall can harness the potential of our young people and their energies to drive it forward, providing blue economy jobs as we strive to end the unemployment crisis. But more excitingly, this will create a sense of ownership and continuity if young people feel that they're part of the change, not only for this generation, but for generations to come. This way will pass, but the ocean will remain. So in every sphere of your work and life, create your own ripple and don't just drift along. Build your own great plural. And remember to listen to the ocean. This, this is a mission for this generation. And in the words of Franz Fanon, the choice is truly ours to either fulfill it or to betray it. Thank you very much.